Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sinet Television. Now, of course, from time to time, domes, which is basically the plastic cover on a light, are going to get discolored and worn out. And a variety of things can cause this, and most of the manufacturers that we work with create a hard coat that goes on the particular dome or lens, and that helps stop the UV breakdown. But again, as you're running these vehicles through car washes and using detergents to clean them from time to time, you're going to have breakdown. This is the way it goes. So Chris is going to show us how to refresh a lens on a mini Centurion light bulb. Let's go. Well, thank you, Stuart. I have here one of Whelan's mini Century LED light bars. This happens to be the 11 inch. It's available in a 16 and a 23 as well. Available in different color configurations, be it solids and splits. You can have a color match dome or you can have a clear dome to them. Multiple mounting bases as well as you've come to find with these wonderful mini bars. Now they've been around for several years now. DOT vehicles, fire and rescue, police equipment, marine applications, wonderful for volunteers as well. But when it comes to products designed for an exterior use, from time to time, something can occur where something may suffer damage. With a mini bar, what's gonna be taking an impact, be it a tree branch, piece of piping at the construction site, a big rock coming up, bouncing along the freeway, or any other thing that may happen along the highways and byways or the off-road or construction site when you have mini bars on your vehicle. What I'm gonna show you is how easy it is to remove what can be a damaged dome, or if you'd like to give your mini bar some fresh life and change it over from what is a color match dome to what can now be available in a clear dome, I'll show you how simple it is to do the repair or the refresh with an upgrade. It's gonna be the same process. Again, this is the 11 inch, same for the 16 and the 23 there's going to be several basically slide and lock tabs around the mini bar. These are what hold the top polycarbonate dome to the bottom aluminum extrusion. For removing these, easy enough to do. Go ahead, get yourself a small Phillips head screwdriver bit and go ahead and get started with removing the screws that hold the slide retainer in place. As you can see, nice little Phillips head black gripping screw. With those removed, go ahead and get the slide tab started. You're going to push them to the center of the bar. And if we zoom in, you'll notice that there is a very, very small notch or basically a drop step on the dome itself. And that's where these pieces will slide to for being able to be released. You'll need to be a little forceful with these. After all, they are under pressure from the screws, tightening them down. So with that, hold on to the bar and give them a press to get them started. You can see the tab itself, teeth on the back here that grip the channel on the top and the bottom. Same thing here. Slide to the center. And as you can see with those released, the dome itself has become released from the pressure, holding it down, allowing it to be removed. Same thing on the back end here. And once more. With that, we can go ahead, release the edge of the dome. and remove it nice and easily. Something that you'll notice here on the bottom of the dome is a gray seal. This is actually a weathering gasket that drops into the channel on the mini bar itself. You'll notice the channel going all the way around the bar. And with that, this piece is actually its own. So when it comes to the dome, you can go ahead and free it from the edge as needed and then back into place, it'll go into the slide channel here. 
So again, with this being on the dome and in the channel here, it is its own piece, but again, with it being pressure placed to keep grit, grime, and moisture from entering the bar, it is its own freestanding piece, as you see. So with that, just go ahead and reinstall it into the channel by giving it a press in. So now that I've finished getting the gasket pressed back into the edge of the 11 inch mini century here, again, same thing on the 16 and the 23 inch as well, just a longer stretch of gasketing. Time to go ahead, take the new dome. In this case, we'll put the clear one on. Again, remember, the modules inside with the diodes, those are what produce the color. The dome itself in a color matched is matching the color, so it allows this to have a presence of being red, blue, amber, and so on when the bar is not activated and flashing. If you'd like to have clears or something a little bit more discreet when it's not in use, go ahead and select a clear dome or refresh yourself to the clear dome as needed. Take a moment, get the dome realigned here, give it a slight press to get it to begin seating onto the gasket. And from here, reversing the step that you took initially. So take the sliders. You'll notice there is a top in which the screw hole is slightly recessed for the top of the screw. And on the bottom, you don't have a recess. So when putting these in, make sure that you're using the top as specified. Again, start them from the center, put them on the bottom, hug it upward, and go ahead and slide it back into place as needed. Back ones as well. And again, because the gasket has been removed, a new dome is being put on, there hasn't been any previous pressure applied to them as when the clips were originally removed. So be a little forceful with sliding these back on, but no worries, they'll go right into place and lock this down again and follow it up with the screws. Back in place on the front, same on the rear as well. and back for the screws. So as you can see, easy enough process for changing the dome or changing the color of the dome as needed. With that, I'm gonna go ahead, plug this in, turn it on so you folks can see the intensity that it offers with a clear dome and a few displays of flash patterns available as well. As you can see, nice and bright, be it from the head-on TIR6 style modules or off axis on the linear style corners. Again, the module count for the inboards is going to vary based on the 16 inch or the 23 inch profile. You'll gain more as the bar grows in size. Again, variety of different flash patterns available, whether it's the magnetic mount, the vacuum suction mount, or the permanent mount as well. So with that, you can go ahead, select the pattern that best fits your application. Also keep in mind, if you're doing a changeover, replacing a broken dome, refreshing it, if you'd like to adjust the pattern, go ahead and take advantage of the opportune moment to set it to something new for your application. I'm Chris. Thanks for watching SirenNet Television. Back to you, Stuart. Well, that was interesting, Chris. Greatly appreciate it. I'm Stuart. You've been watching SirenNet Television.